The absolute most important thing is officer safety. That's why you're down his level training. Okay. okay, so you're trying to be empathetic at the sacrifice of your officer safety. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, can I kill a kid? Can I shoot a grandma? Can I shoot a mom? Can I shoot a dad? Can I shoot a brother? Why is this all hard? Because we have to live with it. You're in the wrong profession, my friend, if you can't live with that. How many of you made that decision? One out of seven. How many brothers do you have out here? How many sisters? They mean less to you than some a mental subject. You go home, you soul search, and you figure it out. And if that question hasn't been answered tomorrow, I suggest you don't come back. The absolute most important thing is officer safety. All right, all right, all right, people, people, people. This one's coming at us from WXYZ TV Detroit. And they've had their eyes on this police officer, Stephen Koo, for a hot minute. Total payout of lawsuits for this guy has been almost three million dollars and guess what this guy is still employed by dpd go figure so let me know what you think about this story in the comments and go over to wxyz channel 7 so you can see their full videos on this story and make sure you like share and subscribe people love y'all bye Thanks for watching. Sergeant Stephen Q's alarming history of misconduct was first revealed by 7 investigator Ross Jones more than two years ago. And now the city of Detroit has agreed to pay out a seven-figure settlement to make the latest claims against him go away. That officer, he's still on the force. He's still on the force. He's still on the force. Their officers were going out and violating the Constitution, violating their own internal policies and procedures, and it was unchecked. Among Detroit's most troubled police officers, few compare to Stephen Koo. As we first revealed more than two years ago, the Detroit police officer has been accused repeatedly of excessive force, found to have used the N-word, and amassed 85 complaints, 85 complaints, 85 complaints from citizens who said he terrorized communities of color. He a gangster with a badge. I'm, I'm 38 years old. I ain't never seen no evil like that. Just remember, if you look in the face of evil, evil's gonna look right back at you. While the pain inflicted is unquantifiable, the cost to taxpayers is easy to count. With the latest settlement paid out in December, lawsuits where Koo was a defendant have cost the city nearly $3 million. And they jumped out cussing, and people took off running. In December, the city paid its biggest check yet, $2 million to Mark Gaddis. He sued the department after Koo shot him following a police raid at his aunt's house in 2017. Koo said he shot Gaddis because he pointed a gun at him. Another officer supported his account, and police recovered a gun. After being shot, Gaddis was hospitalized. I woke up in the room. They just kept trying to make me say I had a gun. And just trying to force me to say you know. But witnesses said Gaddis had no gun, that he was running away from coup. The firearm recovered by officers didn't have enough DNA to determine if anyone had touched it. Could that have been a burner gun planted by the police? Gaddis was charged with 11 felonies and acquitted of all of them. This was a cover-up of a shooting of an unarmed man, and luckily, the jury was able to see through that. Allison Krieger was Gaddis's criminal attorney and said she was most appalled not by Koo's misconduct as an officer, but by the department's indifference to it. Instead of being terminated, even after being found to have lied. Now I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve the promotions to the rank of sergeant. Ku was promoted. Violate rights, get stripes. This could not have gone on without people at every level or members at every level being complicit. Indeed, over the last two years, our reporting has revealed officers who stayed on the force after being found to have strangled women left bruises on children, or used racist language. They remained at DPD, along with Stephen Koo. Sergeant Koo is still there. They've taken no steps to remedy the underlying problems that are ongoing within the department. DPD would argue that they have. 
In 2021, following our reports, newly appointed Chief James White changed how the department monitors risky officer behavior, flagging those with high numbers of citizen complaints and uses of force, those who engage in multiple police chases or were frequently sued. 128 of them were labeled as high risk. 128 of them were labeled as high risk. 128 of them were labeled as high risk, with the department pledging to address their conduct. But as long as Stephen Koo has a badge, Gaddis and his attorneys are skeptical that anything has really changed. Koo has been on desk duty for the last two plus years and did not return our calls for comment. I hope that they understand that he is not alone, that he's not just another bad apple, that this was a direct product of what was happening within the department. In response to the settlement, the Detroit Police Department released a lengthy statement that says in part, an internal investigation reviewed Sergeant Koo and his fellow officers conduct that night and deemed it justified. That officer, he's still on the force.